All right, today we're going to look at Betaflight 3.5 target on the Helio Spring board. Okay, so a little while ago I was approached by a gentleman on the Black Box Log Facebook group about uh, some noise he wanted to address on his Helio Spring uh, flight control board. And he had a Betaflight 3.5, I believe it was, not 3.5.1, but 3.5, and that's Betaflight, not Butterflight, on the Helio board. And he ran the plasma tree graph, and this was the result. Now on the Helio, you can't uh, see raw noise, which would be really nice if he could. And I know they can pass that data, they just kind of choose not to. I would really love to do some filter comps. The, uh, you can see this motor uh, band of noise right through here. So this is when the motors are obviously down at 20% throttle. This is the motor band. Uh, this is the noise band. And then as you increase throttle, you can see that noise band increases from 200 hertz all the way up to around 500 hertz, uh, maybe even a little bit more, 525 in that range, almost up to 550. And that's the ingenious of the dynamic notch. So the dynamic notch in Betaflight uh, or Butterflight. Uh, in Butterflight's Helio target, it's disabled. You can't turn it on. In Betaflight, it, it's available to turn on. But that dynamic notch uh, comes in from this side. Basically, goes horizontal across the band here. So it would kill. You know, if the dynamic notch is sitting at 200, you would see it notch and cut out the noise at 200. And a static notch filter, obviously, the the problem is it doesn't move as this this band of noise moves up but the dynamic notch tracks that and, and moves up. So when I saw this graph, I was really surprised. My first question to him was, do you have the dynamic notch turned on? He's like, yeah, it's enabled. I'm like, well, are you, are you sure? Because it doesn't look like it is. So anyways, he um, was able to fly another flight of it. And overall, honestly, the noise, it has that motor band in there. So it could be better, but it's not horrible. I've seen worse logs, 32K logs, uh, this is 1616. See, that's what stinks about not being able to see that raw motor noise because you have nothing to compare by. Is it is it just mechanically the quad is sound? So then you just don't need much filtering? Or is the filtering actually doing a lot? Like it's not mechanically sound and the filtering is really doing an amazing job. You can't tell without seeing raw noise because you have no baseline. But anyways, uh, so either the mechanics of it are good or the filtering is, is doing an okay job. Uh, usually what I'll check here, if I go to full throttle uh, spectrograph of it, not a spectrograph, but full throttle, you can see the D-term isn't out of control. Now his D-term, his PIDs aren't very high, uh, at least for, for what I do. I usually run my D-term up in the 40s, but that requires some good filtering. I, I would think that's almost double these. Um, that's not quite double, but it's quite a bit higher, so if they would go, if you go that high, I don't, I don't know if that would, that would work too well or not. But um, yeah, it's, it seems pretty much in control. So how did, it, how do you tell if the dynamic notch is working nowadays, and how did I know? So you, you know, if you run the debug mode gyro underscore scale, so let's go into the, um, to the header log file here, and you can go down to the bottom, and you can see there's some different debug modes. I don't think I can click on this right here, but in black in uh, Betaflight configurator. So I figured I'd just show you. So if you go into the CLI command and type uh, get debug, you can see there's a whole bunch of debug values. And the normal one you'd run a grab is gyro underscore scaled, and that would show you raw noise. But that doesn't honestly really show you if the dynamic notch is doing what it needs to do. It just shows you, you know, your raw motor noise. If you turn on FFT underscore frequency, so that's the FFT is the the piece of the code uh, that is telling the dynamic notch uh, how to track the motor noise. It's, it's doing a spectrograph and it's you know, finding a peak and then it's, it's tracking that. And the underscore frequency essentially shows you what the position of the dynamic notch is for the roll and pitch axis. So if you'd record that in a flight, and then you can see it's recorded here, the dynamic notch is enabled. So let's see what we're getting for values. So the tip off right here is this just pegs. I was involved in the dynamic notch um, code changes done for Betaflight 3.5 
and 666 is a, is a getaway. When the dynamic notch doesn't know what to do, it just goes up to 666. So right now with this log, you know, it's just pegged up against 666 the entire time. So it's not, it's, it's turned on, but it's, it's just staying at 666. It's not moving around at all. It's not tracking the motor noise. Uh, debug three would be raw noise. That's blank. And then again, debug uh, zero, one, and two, which is roll, pitch, and yaw. They're just pegged up at 666, so it's not really doing anything. So, figured that was video worthy. So when you're, you know, running Betaflight 3.5 or 3.5.1, and you're enabling the dynamic notch and thinking you're getting the benefit of that on a helio board, you're not. It's a little funny uh, if you're not in tune with it. The the helio target for Betaflight is not really a supported board. So they um, provide that on their own uh, GitHub wiki. And this is the, the hex files. Now the source code, it gets even stranger. The source code for that is actually this Betaflight Helio target under the Butterflight repository or the GitHub uh, site. Even further stranger is Butterflight's in the process of rebasing all of Butterflight to be Betaflight 3.5.1. So yeah, everybody's gonna be flying Betaflight very soon. Even if you're flying Butterflight, you're flying, flying Betaflight. Actually, you were flying Betaflight the entire time you were flying Butterflight, except for the filter, which, oh yeah, Betaflight did develop the fast common filter. So, yeah, uh, anyways. Honestly, the only thing that I know of, the only filter I've ever seen that can kill a motor band like this, I know I'm clicking all around here, is the dynamic notch. I don't know of any other filter that will do it. Let's talk about that for a second. So I've updated my Betaflight, uh, now it's the 4.0, dynamic filter calc or filter calc sheet. This initially just had latency calculations in it. So I've added in the attenuation strength. And there's an interesting thing that occurs with notch filters that I've learned while doing this. At the at absolute theoretical center of a notch filter, there's unlimited attenuation. So honestly, in here, when I made those calculations and updates, so if I do um, unhide here, and you can do the same thing. You can go download this. Uh, I'll put the, drop the link below. And you can check the maths and the sources. I have the sources for the uh, information of where, you know, the calculations. But if you that went into the attenuation and the and the phase delay, so again all this filtering stuff like low pass filters, fast common filters, notch filters, this is novel stuff. This has been out for a long time in a lot of other industries. So it's we're not recreate we're not creating anything really here. We're just kind of recreating it. I think one of the big things that we're doing is that we're putting it into a real time system where. Many times these filters are used in post-processing, so they have all the time and compute cycles in the world. Um, we don't. So that's a different uh, aspect to it. But the, the theory and the maths behind these filters are, are well vetted. Anyways, you can see right here the calculation, and you can go look at the sources under that uh, tiny.cc filter cap. There's some PDFs in there. This is the, the, the math of how a notch filter works. And the absolute, at the absolute center, you actually get an infinite uh, amount of attenuation. So it absolutely cuts all noise. And you can see that is if you do a, um, if you take a static notch, for example, and you would put it, say, right through, right, right on 200, and then refly this flight, you will see a dark blue band go right through the center of this. Absolutely no, and that will carry through onto your D term too, which is a big noise amplifier, the D term. And there will be no noise right at the exact center. And it lines up with the, the math. So in this sheet, I had to say, okay, well, when I get an error, let's do, uh, I don't know, negative 20 decibels of attenuation, which is, you know, 0.1 times the amplitude uh, of the of the noise. I wanted to talk about another aspect of notch filters that I hear from some guys, not so much the Betaflight crowd, but you know, guys from, it's a thing that some people say, that notch filters are horrible, nobody likes notch filters, they suck, and 
they don't suck. The math shows completely the opposite of that. So let's look at this. This is a graph, now that we have the math all in one spot for latency and attenuation, and we look at the notch filter versus a low pass filter, and we set the cutoff, so this is a low pass filter cutoff at 120 hertz, PT1 filter. We have a notch filter at 200 hertz, which is the center frequency, but then we're setting the notch cutoff to match the low pass filter. The, basically the cutoff is where it achieves negative three decibels of attenuation. And if you wanted to play with some of that data, like what's what's negative three decibels of attenuation, you can go to here. So negative three decibels of attenuation is 0 0.708 times the amplitude. So if you have a the amplitude is one, you times it now you'd be 0 0.708, and that's what negative three, negative six is. Um, oops, go the other way. 0.5 is negative six, so on and so forth. And you can type in 0.6 here if you wanted to do that or negative six, and you can go the opposite direction. So anyways, on this chart, this is amplitude or attenuation over latency. So higher is better. And you can see pound for pound, a notch filter is a more effective and efficient filter than a low pass filter up until, when the cutoff is at 120 at least, up until around uh, 350 hertz. Now that's assuming that the center stays at 200 up around 350 hertz, then the low pass filter be, uh, starts to have a greater attenuation versus phase delay or, or latency aspect to it for the, the noise up in this range. Honestly, we only care about noise uh, sub 100 hertz. We only care, I'm sorry, we only care about phase delay for sub 100 hertz because this is the actual motion and prop washes down here. All this other stuff we'd just rather clip out. Now obviously the other part of this is with a dynamic notch, this moves out as it's tracking that motor noise. And oops, I'm sorry, I had the dynamic notch not set to the right uh, piece there. So when I move that down, you can see that, that graph slid down. But let me just move this back up. So if I was at 250, you can see that sliding up. So now I also have to move uh, the low pass here as well. So that would be at... If I move the dynamic notch up to 250, then that low pass automatically have it set, so it's moving up to 150 here as well to match. And you can see the attenuation um, or the ratio there. And then if I move this up to 400, you can see both update here, and then that's updating as well. So across the board, as the dynamic notch moves up, if you're doing a pound for pound comparison, the notches are more effective. Obviously, the the spike here is where the center of the, of the notch filter is. So it's super duper effective versus latency right at the center position of the notch. Okay, so that's it. Just a little information on how Betaflight 3.5 is working on that specific board and, and some additional information on how filters work and things of that nature. Thanks, and I hope this helped.